Angel, it is what we call a one-stop shop in terms of logistic solutions. It means that we can provide to our customers the whole portfolio of logistic services. Most of the time that we spend, it's finding ways to be more efficient. And technology and digitalization is on the base of that uh, pursuit of efficiency. If you have the chance and the opportunity to implement a minor change, but a secure change, and that it will, it will stick, it's better to do that one, two, three times then forever wait for the perfection that will never come. Waiting for that perfection is a, it's, it's a way of never getting things done. This is CRNet TV. My name is Hendrik Deckers. I'm here today with Miguel Cordero, who's a director of information technology systems at Rangel. A very warm welcome, Miguel. Thank you, Hendrik. Nice talking to you again. Miguel, you have a degree in computer science from the University of Porto and additional degrees from the London and the uh, Porto Business School. Your career is all about IT. You started as project manager, software engineer, and uh, you're now also a professor at the Porto University. You joined Rangel in 2010 as project manager for the logistics uh, part, and you were promoted to the corporate director of information technology position in 2017. So Miguel, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Who are you really? What's your background and how did you arrive in this position? Sure. Okay. So my name is Miguel. I'm 44 years old, married. Mm -hmm. I have a son. Uh, all my background is on IT. Uh, I did a computer science degree in the late 90s. I started my career in the early 2000s uh, doing IT systems implementations. Uh, in, a, in a company here in Porto, north of Portugal, um, that was specialized in the uh, fashion and lifestyle market. So uh, I okay. spent my, uh, my, my, my days uh, visiting customers, okay? mm -hmm. doing software development, doing support, uh, collecting requirements, okay? mm -hmm. so basically doing, doing uh, implementations. In 2004, yep. I moved into a different project. I joined a, a software house, also here mm -hmm. in the north of Portugal. That software house was and still is the market leader in terms of ERP developments. There, mm -hmm. I, did the se I had several roles in IT, from software development, uh, quality assurance. That's where, where I started to, to, do, to lead teams, okay? to coordinate mm -hmm. teams. Um, in 2010, uh, I did a, a different, I, I took a different uh, challenge here at Rangel. Uh, it yeah. was the time that I moved from technological companies into a, a final customer. So Rangel is a logistics mm -hmm. service provider. Um, yeah. I joined the IT department to, for project management in the mm -hmm. logistics sector. And as you said, in 2017, uh, the board invited me to, to lead the, the whole spectrum of IT here at Rangel. Okay. Rangel is a Portuguese company uh, in, in logistics. Explain us a little bit more. How big is it? What, is the, what are the, the, the business focus and, uh, and so on? Sure. Okay. So Rangel is a, uh, it's a company that has more than 40 years of existence. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was founded by Eduardo Rangel in the, in the 80s. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is what we call a one-stop shop in terms of logistic solutions. It means that mm -hmm. uh, we, we can provide to our customers the whole portfolio of logistic services from uh, uh, international transportation, air, sea and road, uh, customs, mm -hmm. uh, contract logistics, express and parcels. Okay. Uh, that's what means to be a, a one-stop shop. Uh, yeah. Apart from Portugal, that where the, the headquarters are located, we are also present in, uh, in eight other countries. Okay? Mm -hmm. We have a global revenue of around 217 million euros per year. Um, mm -hmm. We have more than 2,000 employees worldwide. And uh, yeah. in, the, in the markets where we are present, we are definitely uh, market leaders. Yeah, so serious logistic company. Uh, I understand more than 8 million shipments a year. So a lot of processes going on. But if we look at the business side, what are the today, 
the main drivers for change in the organization and how is, how is uh, business responding to it? Sure. So uh, there are many, many drivers. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if I have to choose the most relevant, I would say efficiency. Okay. So uh -huh. uh, logistics, uh, logistics business, it's all about efficiency. So customers expect their supply chains to be highly efficient. Uh, they yep. expect that their logistics partners uh, uh, help them to reduce their costs. So mm -hmm. uh, we, most of the time that we spend, it's finding ways to be more efficient. Okay? Mm -hmm. And technology and digitalization is, the, is on the base of that uh, pursuit of, of efficiency. Uh, the other, I would say, it will be sustainability. Okay? We are okay. aware that as, as a logistics provider, we have uh, an important uh, uh, role in terms of reducing our footprint. Okay? So mm -hmm. we do it because we believe it's the right thing to do and we have an obligation to do. And also because our customers, okay, we, ha we, we operate in highly sophisticated markets such as pharma, automotive, aviation. And those, mm -hmm. those customers in those markets, they, are, they have high uh, levels of awareness in terms of sustainability. And they, yeah. they basically impact the whole supply chain. And we are right in the middle of it. So uh, if I have to say, I would, I would elect those two. Let's talk about efficiency first. So making uh, a company more efficient means to, you need to automate as much as possible all the different processes. So can you tell me a little bit, where are you in your, in your automation journey? to optimize uh, processes as much as possible. Sure, of course. We at our, the IT department, we spent most mm, a relevant part of our time doing the system integrations, automating processes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. uh, the, it is a, a, a critical success factor to, to prevent uh, double data entry, to prevent, mm -hmm. uh, to prevent uh, data redundancy. So uh, mm -hmm. we, we definitely spend uh, lots of effort and investment uh, integrating all our systems being mm -hmm. those systems internal or even with, with external partners okay mm -hmm. uh, one of the relevant uh, initiatives that we did okay it was uh, uh, the creation of a center of excellence for robotic process automation okay, okay. Uh, and why because there are certain points and aspects of our processes and systems that cannot be automated by the standard and traditional approach to system integration. Because yep. there are legacy systems, because uh, there is not enough knowledge to, to do standard and traditional integrations on those systems. Uh, mm -hmm. and so we, we discovered and we, we assessed that robots can uh, fulfill that yep that empty space that is created in mm -hmm. certain in certain scenarios. Um, so we, we are now uh, uh, doing a huge investment, a, a relative large mm -hmm. investment in creating a, a center of excellence for robotic process automation. Okay, and can you give some examples? What kind of processes, what kind of things that you're automating with these, sof uh, sure. with these software robots? Sure, okay. It is normal during our, our regular business uh, that mm -hmm. uh, manual tasks uh, they pop up and appear uh, regularly because uh, mm -hmm. uh, because of, of a new customer because of a, of a new process that uh, appeared for some specific reason and many times there I, there is no time or uh, or in terms of investment is not interesting to to go with uh, with the traditional integration so for mm -hmm. example uh, pushing data from a system to another, uh, automating order capture from customers. Okay, that was one of the major and most, most uh, interesting use cases that we did. So we automated mm -hmm. the data entry from a, a pharmaceutical company totally using uh, robo robots. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, many financial processes uh, from the financial area are also being automated using robots. Uh, for example, we, we automated uh, uh, suppliers' payment processes, okay, using, uh, mm -hmm. uh, using their own home banking uh, websites. Okay, that previously it was done with uh, 
normal uh, normal uh, company employees doing manual data entry. So that's also mm -hmm. one of the relevant use cases that we have done. And uh, there are others that I can I can I can name it. Uh, for example, uh, we 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 implemented a, a process to to calculate and give our suppliers the visibility for when a specific invoice will be paid for them. Okay, mm -hmm. so we did, it is a, a, a highly complex uh, calculation that yeah. before we had this system, uh, it, it wasn't done or it was done in a very inefficient way. And how do you decide if a certain process that you're going to program it into your systems or you're going to use a software robot for it? What, what, what is the, how do you dis select which processes you uh, automate with, with RPA? Okay, uh, the decision, we, we have a, a set of criteria that we use okay, mm -hmm. to, to decide how, we're going to, how we are going to automate that specific process. But uh, yeah. uh, there, there is one that is usually on the top of the decision process that is, okay, is it possible to use standard integrations? Okay, can we use okay. uh, the middleware uh, platform? Is there, a, is there a available APIs or any kind of uh, yeah. st standard integration? If not, and if the process uh, is actual, uh, uh, um, it, it, it is a, a process that uh, makes sense to automate, okay? So robots mm -hmm. are uh, usually the, the way that we use it. Okay. okay. Uh, and then uh, other scenario is that okay, uh, we use it robots for to implement automations that, uh, for some reason, the the, the, the standard IT teams uh, backlog does not allow to to no. to pick up in the, on that specific problem immediately. So we use we use no. robots to solve the uh, problem temporarily before we move into a, a more definitive uh, solution also. Yeah, and so uh, setting up, you set up a center of excellence. Tell us a little bit about that. Was, was that an IT-driven decision to do that or was that a demand that came from the business? What was the, 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 sure. the, the let's say, the governance around setting up such a, such a center? Sure, sure. At Rangel, it was an IT-driven uh, initiative, mm -hmm. okay? I'm aware that is, it's not so common because usually robots they 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 appear uh, because mm -hmm. IT does not have the uh, the, the backlog or does that does not have the necessary resources to automate process. So robots it's yeah. something that they appear in other areas in finance, human resources, or even in business. Yeah. Okay, Rangel, we did it uh, in a different way. I admit it. So it was an IT driven mm -hmm. uh, initiative. Okay, so yep. uh, the center of excellence is governed by, by IT. So we are the ones that, uh, that, uh, that built the, the framework for, on, with which we, we manage uh, the whole life cycle of a robot coming from the discovery of the opportunity. Okay? Of course, very, in a, in a very close, uh, with a very close work with, with business and, uh, and the other mm -hmm. stakeholders, the qualification, Okay, that's where we decide if, if the process uh, is possible to be automated and where we set uh, priorities between process because, of course, it's no different than the other projects. There are much more needs than capabilities. So we need yeah. to prioritize that. Uh, we do the implementations. We define the architecture, the best practices, the deployment, okay? and also the, what we call the benefit tracker. Okay, that is a, a cross-check mm -hmm. that allows us to make sure yeah. that the, the actual benefit is the one that was uh, used on the business case for that use case. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So how easy was it to, to get business on board because it has an impact on their processes, on their people, you're, you're automating manual processes and so on. So, so how, how, was, how easy was it for you to convince business to use these software, software sure. robots? Okay. I have to admit, it, it was not hard. Okay, it was not hard. I am. Because, okay. uh, yeah, because the, uh, uh, the purpose of adopting this technology uh, was to mm -hmm. uh, uh, liberate or release people from doing non-added value tasks, okay, and allow, okay. allow them to, to, to focus their time and effort on other mm -hmm. tasks, namely the ones with yep. the high, high added value. So, and people, they understood that. 
okay? They didn't saw it as something, okay, this is going to steal my, my role or, or lower mm -hmm. my importance here. No, no. Uh, I, I believe that may not happen in all organizations, but here at Rangel, yeah. it, was, it was accepted. And people now, they are the ones that they are pushing us back and say, I have a use case. Can you please check my use case? So mm -hmm. I think the, the, the response was, and it is very good. So you, you, you said that you have a kind of a framework to manage the life cycle of, of robots. Can you, can you talk about that? How do, you, how do you do the life cycle management of your software robots? Sure, sure. When we started the, the center of excellence, that was one of our mm -hmm. main and first tasks to be done. It was to design that, the, that framework, okay? So okay. that we may, we had sure that we had a, a good governance over it. So, mm -hmm. so the framework is basically does an end-to-end -end, uh, management of the. So, uh, we have a way, we have a procedure to do the discovery where people can mm -hmm. present us use cases. Okay, so that we can evaluate them. We have a qualification process. Okay, we study if the process can be automated. Is it a mechanic process? Uh, what is the level of decision that the robot has to take? Uh, mm -hmm. How many times is it, it is executed? What is the expected return of investment that, is, that we will mm -hmm. get from that automation? Okay, so we call yep. that the qualification. Okay, mm -hmm. and after this, we, we have a backlog, an ordered backlog, okay? that on top there are the user cases that will be bring more benefit to, to the organization, okay, to the company. Yep. And then we, we implement those, those robots, okay, we use our own engineers, okay, we also outsource and contract a lot, of course. Mm -hmm. um, we go to production, we follow up, we do the hypercare, okay, and then we have a, the, a final step that is the benefit tracker, okay. This benefit tracker is something that we introduced later as a lesson learned. Okay, and it, that's okay. very interesting. We, 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 we had the need to verify that the actual benefit that we are having from that robot matches the expectations that were raised during the qualification. Okay, because it happened, of course, uh, uh, after it was implemented, the benefit, okay, it was uh, uh, below the, the expectation. So, we, mm -hmm. we, we have this benefit tracker that we monitor, okay? It is a fully mm -hmm. automated process. So the execution of the robot itself feeds this, uh, this, this repository of data, okay? And then mm -hmm. with the analytical processes, we can measure the, the, the benefit that, that we are getting for each process that is automated okay. in terms of hours that are saved, of course. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about the, the, the technology, the platform that you use, and also about the results that you have? And, and, and can you put that into, in, into monetary value? value? Sure, sure, sure. So we, we, we chose the UI path. Okay. Mm -hmm. We did uh, during the, 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 the design of the framework and setting up the, the COE, the, the, the center of excellence, we did a, a benchmark of tools available mm -hmm. in the market. Okay. And yeah. we, we, we went for UiPath, okay? At the mm -hmm. time, and still now we believe it is indeed the most mature uh, platform available, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we went to, to UiPath. Okay. Now that we're talking tools and, and, and you're in, 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 in Portugal and we come to the results maybe in a moment, um, are you also using the, the, the low-code, no-code, uh, low-code, no-code tools that are available nowadays, like, uh, like from OutSystems, uh, one of the, the top Portuguese uh, technology companies today? Is that also on your, uh, on your roadmap? Yes, yes. Adopting low-code is also one of mm -hmm. the, the, the pillars from our transformation as, a, as an IT department. So we moved mm -hmm. from the the traditional development processes that in the, in the industry, they call it the high code, okay? And we are moving to, to low code to build uh, enterprise applications, okay? Uh, we, we truly believe that makes lots of sense in our, in our mm -hmm. specific uh, context. So we build uh, enterprise applications for our internal customers. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, indeed, uh, low code can give us the the necessary acceleration in terms of delivering those applications to the business. Okay, mm -hmm. 
Okay. Okay. So then let's talk a little bit about the results. Can, how, sure. how do you look back on the results of your center of, uh, of, sure. of excellence around RPA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, we are now able to evaluate the results. O of course, there is mm -hmm. a, a monetary uh, benefit okay, for the number mm -hmm. of hours of manual labor that stopped being executed. Okay? Yep. Meaning that those hours allow, us, allow our, my colleagues in the business to to focus on other tasks with more added value, okay? Uh, and that's, that's the direct, uh, direct benefit that we got. But there are other benefits. For example, we were able to, to integrate new customers without the need of increasing the structure, okay? Uh, using that uh, order capture use case, okay? mm -hmm. we are able now to to conquer new customers without the need for new investments, okay, in terms of structure. And that, yeah. that's pure efficiency, okay, and goes directly into the, to the company margin. So Miguel, let's talk about the, uh, your order to cash to pay program uh, that you are implementing in freight forwarding. Maybe you need to first explain us a little bit what freight forwarding is and then what this program is, uh, is, is all about. What was the problem that you uh, are trying to solve? Sure, there? okay. So uh, freight forwarding is, uh, uh, it represents about half of the revenue of, of Rangel Logistics mm -hmm. Solutions. So it is very important, okay, for yeah. us. Uh, it is a business that uh, uh, we have it in all, every country that we are. So it is usually mm -hmm. the, the, the business line that we use to to move into a new country or a new geography. So it yep. is, it is a, a very relevant uh, business line for us. So what is freight forwarding? Freight forwarding is uh, it's doing door-to-door -door transportations to our customers, okay? It's about orchestrating multimodal uh, transports. For example, if you need to move, uh, if you are a company that produce and sell a product, and you want to move uh, two or three pallets uh, from mm -hmm. your warehouse to the warehouse of your customer that is on the other side of the world, okay? Mm -hmm. And we need a truck to collect those pallets. We need uh, 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 an ocean vessel to, to move those, those, those pallets across the ocean. And we, you want yep. to deliver the, 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 the pallets to your customer, okay? And in the mm -hmm. middle of that, you have customs, Okay, worldwide with uh, lots of different scenarios and regulations. That's what mm -hmm. the freight forwarder does to our customers. So we remove all the complexity of moving goods around the world to our yep. customers. And for them, it is a seamless experience. Okay, so that's what freight forwarding is. Okay. Okay. And, and, and in this business, you have basically, I understand, replaced the transport management system, the, the, the yes. core engine of, of, of freight forwarding. Let's talk about that. Yes, correct. So there is a core system to support this business, mm -hmm. okay? It was a, a legacy application, uh, okay. more, uh, more than 30 years old application, okay? Well, uh, mm -hmm. uh, On-prem application, a bespoke solution, so developed internally, okay? Um, mm -hmm. With all that, what it represents in terms of, uh, of local resources, uh, we are we we're start, we started to 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 have difficulties uh, finding the the resources and recruiting uh, specialized resources to continue to develop this this platform. Uh, yeah. It it is, it stopped responding to the to the current needs of the business. So we did a, a very uh, an ambitious decision. So uh, first we we moved into a commercial off the shelf product. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, although highly customized and highly integrated, okay, but mm -hmm. we are now moved into a, a commercial solution uh, that is on the cloud. So we, we stop building s uh, uh, software, okay, and then we move to a, to a, to a, a software provider, a SaaS provider, yep. okay, mm -hmm. and we, we moved from on prem to, to, to the cloud, okay. That uh, forced the IT department to re reinvent himself, okay? So... Yeah, uh, I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, so we, we, we stopped worrying about keeping the lights on, okay? Mm -hmm. And we are now able to focus uh, on 
do uh, implementing features that enable value yep. to, to, to the business. Okay? But the project, uh, it's not only about uh, okay, migrating a, a core application. Okay? It was a, a greenfield project okay? that uh, uh, allow us to review the, the whole processes, uh, mm -hmm. namely the integrations between the front end, that is the freight forwarding, or, mm -hmm. for the freight forwarding operations, mm -hmm. and the back end, that is uh, the, the financial back, back office, okay? Yeah. Uh, because it's uh, it's uh, freight forwarding is also it's a business of buying transportation and reselling it to, to final customers. So it is very uh, task intensive in terms of uh, 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 credit risk assessment, uh, invoicing. Mm -hmm. So it's very intense. Uh, so it is critical that the front end and the back end to be highly integrated. That's, yeah. that's fundamental, okay? Yeah. So uh, all those processes were reviewed. So it was a project that involved um, many people in the organization. It was a cross-department project. Um, everyone had a chance to, to review and redesign some of the core processes, okay? Yeah, because I understand that in freight forwarding, in organizing that and, and a system for that, you have three major components. You have the, 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 the quotes that you need to uh, give to, to the customers. You have to manage the actual shipments and then you need to make sure that you get your money, right? Sure, sure. So, <laughs> That's the can, cycle. Can you, explain the, yeah, can you explain these three steps? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, you just describe what is the cycling of the cycle of freight forwarding. So, yes, quoting. Mm -hmm. Quoting is very important because it's a business, mm -hmm. it's, it's a highly competitive business, lots of, co okay. lots of competi competitors, okay? It's a, very, mm -hmm. it's a very mature market. And uh, yeah. many times it works uh, like an auction. So companies, they, okay. they, they send a bid to, to the market, to the freight forwarders, mm -hmm. and uh, many times the criteria, the criteria is the, the first to, to respond. So it is okay. very important that uh, our operations, they have the right tools to elaborate a quote, to validate uh, financial and risk background to the customers so that they can provide the, the quote in a timely fashion, okay? And ideally to be the first one to, to, to do that. And of course, also having competitive pricing, okay? Yeah. So that's one of the, of the legs of, 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 the, of, the, of this process. Then we have the, the visibility, so the track and trace visibility. Okay, so our mm -hmm. customers, they expect from us full visibility and traceability of their goods. So they want to know where is the cargo, if it was already shipped, if not, if there is some kind of a custom blockage. Okay, they, want, they expect that, and they expect yeah. that with a high customer experience. Okay, they mm -hmm. want to, they want to go digital. They want to, they have self-service mechanisms. Okay, so track and track and traces and manage the the shipment life cycle. It's also critical. It's also critical. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end, uh, we need, to, as you said, we need to collect the money efficiently. So we need to invoice fast. We need to to have uh, efficient collection processes. We need also, in terms of accounts payable, to be very efficient because we are purchasing transport, transportations into carriers, airlines, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and road companies, okay, truck yeah. companies. Uh, we need to be also very efficient in terms of uh, receiving the supplier invoices, doing the matching, accepting, making sure that the costs are uh, aligned of what, what it was sold previously. Mm -hmm. so, it is, it is a very intense, uh, tense business because we are not talking about uh, half dozen uh, uh, invoices per day. We're talking about hundreds of uh, invoices per day that need to be yep. uh, processed and managed very fast. Okay. And so you, your legacy system, on-prem, uh, custom-built, was re replaced by a, a standard that you then uh, uh, customize, but by a, a standard in the cloud system. 
So that must have, and, and like I said, had a big impact on your organization. So tell me a little bit, how did you implement that and how did you need to change your organization to do a, a, a big project like this? Yes, indeed. Uh, the big changes that we, we have changes in the business and we have changes mm -hmm. on the IT right. department itself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because, because, because Rangel stopped being the manufacturer of, of the product, the, the operations itself, the business, the, the business itself, they had, they had to uh, gain much more skills and competence on the, on the product. They now, the product owners, they are now in the business. It's people in the business that, uh, that know the product. They, they follow the, the product roadmap with the, with the manufacturer. Okay? Mm -hmm. they, they decide the technology that is transferred to their own rea rea reality. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that was a, a big change on, on the way we used to operate that then, okay? Yeah. And the IT department itself, because uh, we are now focused on other things. Uh, we mm -hmm. don't have less work. On the contrary, <laughs> we have even more work every day. But mm -hmm. we, we, know we are no longer focused on keeping the lights on. Uh, we are not worrying if the infrastructure is uh, responding. Okay, my, mm -hmm. I trust my partner to do that to do that for me. Okay, mm -hmm. me and my team we are now focused on how can we automate processes, how can we integrate our systems with our partners. Okay, how can we give yeah. customized solutions to our customers? Okay, mm -hmm. that's where we stand and, now. Yeah, and what what are the What's the end result? What's the business result? I mean, is this completely implemented already? Did you decommission your, your on-prem system? And, and, and can you talk about the, the business results? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the project is still, uh, is still going. So we did the, the, major, the major implementation. We did it uh, in Portugal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, the, the product was deployed here in Portugal. We are now deploying in, in the all other eight countries. Okay, mm -hmm. and we are doing it right uh, as we speak, and we estimate that will take us uh, 23 the year or 23 to, to finalize that. Okay, mm -hmm. and the results are uh, are visible. Okay, uh, yeah. we have less manual work because we have more mm -hmm. processes integrated. The front end uh, 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 is much more integrated with with the back end. We can have uh, uh, credit risk assessments done uh, almost immediately because we, we did lots of integrations on that processes. We developed the algorithms that help to, to automate decisions up to certain level. Okay, mm -hmm. so we are now able to operate more, vo more volume okay, with, the less, uh, with, with the same resources. Okay? And yep. that allows the company to grow. Okay, to grow uh, with, uh, with lower costs. Yeah. Okay. So that makes your company more competitive, uh, allows you to uh, do better business, have uh, higher margins, uh, I can imagine. So this is key to the success of the company. Indeed, indeed. Because uh, th this business is, uh, uh, we are always after the margin. Okay, that's yeah. one of the, the, the key aspects of this business. And everything that allows the, to keep, to keep the margin or grow the margin, okay, it's, mm -hmm. it's very, very important. And in the end, if the customer is, sees uh, innovation, uh, becomes as a more digital and better experience, okay, mm -hmm. that's also a, a benefit. So Miguel, we talked about efficiency as one of the major drivers and, and, and how uh, RPA and software robots can help to, uh, to automate manual tasks and to, uh, to create efficiency uh, on, on that level and how your new transport management system uh, dramatically increases efficiency and reduces cost. Uh, but the other business driver uh, for change in your company that is important, uh, like you said, is sustainability. So let's talk a little bit about that. What is the what is the the, the things that you're working on regarding uh, sustainability in the company, and how is IT and digital helping uh, to uh, to reach these goals? Sure, of course. Uh, we are we are a three PL, so we are a logistic provider. We are aware that we have a, a very significant uh, footprint, okay, mm -hmm. uh, and we know that we have to do our part here. We have to mm -hmm. to care for the planet, 
okay? Yep. And actually, there is many things that we can do on our daily operation to, to, to create and go into sustainability, okay? So mm -hmm. uh, we are implementing a, a formal certification for sustainability um, in our warehouses, in our operations, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, IT here has also a very relevant uh, role in terms of uh, mm -hmm. the, the dematerialization of processes, reducing the paper usage, okay? Mm -hmm. um, building intelligent systems that allows to save energy, for example. Okay, we did a, we did a project uh, about, we, we, we call it uh, the smart lightning in the warehouses mm -hmm. that allows yep. a, a huge saving in terms of electricity, okay? And uh, IT ca here can also help by, by, by finding and proposing uh, technologies to, to achieve th th that sustainability. Okay. Let's talk about your uh, IT organization, huh? because it's really a core in making the company more efficient, more sustainable and so on. So, so how is, uh, is your IT uh, department organized today? What's your operating model? Okay, sure. Well, I would say it, it, it's kind of traditional. Okay, so IT department, we are part of the uh, shared services area for Rangel's logistic mm -hmm. solutions, along with financial, purchasing, marketing, legal. Okay, uh, that means that we have a, a, a centralized model. So mm -hmm. here from the, from the corporate center, that's what we call it here. So it's a corporate center. We, we provide uh, IT services for all business lines uh, in, the, mm -hmm. in the corporation and all the countries where we are in, okay? So we, do, we, 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 we provide the, the guidance, the policies, okay? We execute projects from, from, from the, central, the central office, okay? Mm -hmm. Although yeah. our team is, uh, is deployed uh, on many sites, okay? We have people mm -hmm. outside of our tech center in Porto, okay? We have people yep. in Lisbon, we have people in other countries, but they all report to the central structure, okay? okay. And how, how big is the team? So, uh, because you have 2,300 employees in total in, in the company. So how, how big is, and can you talk about the IT budget and relative to, to revenue or not? In terms of people, we are about uh, 40. Uh, 40 mm -hmm. people in uh, in the yep. in the IT department. It's a relatively uh, large team if we consider mm -hmm. the the size of the company and the core business of the company. So at the end of the day, we yep. our core our core business is, is logistics. Okay, uh, the size is the size of the team uh, is somehow related with the fact that we still do. Uh, we do lots of internal development, so we create lots mm -hmm. of customized solutions into our internal customers and to our external customers as well. Okay? Yeah. Well, in terms of budget, it's around, uh, it, it depends on the year, between 1% to 2% of the global revenue of the group, of the okay. corporation. Let's talk about your role. I mean, you're the director of, uh, of IT uh, systems and, 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 uh, and, and applications, like, uh, so you're running IT. Uh, within Rangel, how would you describe your role? Where do you spend today most of your time? Well, uh, when someone asks, asks me that, uh, I usually say I have several roles, okay? Mm -hmm. I still have the role of the traditional, traditional IT director, where uh, mm -hmm. people expect that the infrastructure works well. And Rangel is a, it's a big corporation, highly distributed, that yeah. depends on communications, depends on networking, yeah. okay? So uh, people look at me and my team as someone that ensures that this works well and never yeah. fails, okay? So yeah. it's the traditional view of IT. They're still there, okay? Another role that I have that I particularly mm -hmm. enjoy, it's being kind of the global architect of the company, me and my team. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we are constantly consulted uh, when we are building new products or new services uh, because of the, the impact that technology has, okay? So mm -hmm. uh, it is, it, uh, there are rare situations where uh, a new product is, is created in the company, in the whole company, that IT yeah. is not involved. So we are 
we are always uh, interacting with the business, uh, uh, doing inputs, collecting information, uh, designing processes also. Okay, we are we, we design processes, we implement processes with with the business. Okay, uh, and there is a, a third role. Okay, that mm -hmm. I also appreciate a lot. That is okay, giving innovation to the to the to the business. Okay, also no. uh, working as an enabler, uh, technology as an enabler to propose uh, technical solutions to integrate in our products. Okay, we can use this self-service uh, solution for this business. We can use this technology to accelerate those processes. Okay, uh, fortunately, we have also the the space and room to, to do this in our activity. Okay, super. So you're running this, 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 this IT team, you have your different roles. Let's talk a little bit about your management style. How would you describe your management style? How do you make sure that you attract the right people, that you make them successful, that you, that you retain the right people? How would you describe that? What's, what's the secret of your success? Let's maybe put <laughs> okay. it in that way. <laughs> okay, okay. So. Uh, I, I, I like to think that I have what, we, what I call a, a transformational management style. So uh, mm -hmm. the message that I pass along to my teams is that they should mm -hmm. seize and uh, take the, uh, to seize all the opportunities they find during a project or during a changing uh, moment. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it is also it, it is always possible to improve during a process of change, okay? It mm -hmm. can be a minor, a minor improvement or a more disruptive one, but there is always opportunities that we should take, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, taking, not taking those opportunities will just keep us on the same place. So I try to, 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 to pass this message into my teams, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I try to raise the bar, okay? Let's not do the same thing, the, the same, the, let, let's not do uh, two things in the same way. If we're going to mm -hmm. go uh, to do the, the a second time the same thing, okay, let's improve that. Let's try to put uh, 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 something new in the process. Okay, let's try to evaluate, mm -hmm. to, to upgrade ourselves. So that's the yep. type of message that I pass along to my teams, okay? and. Uh, Hopefully, I hope that they, they, they recognize that and they do yep. that, okay? So that's my management style. That's your management style and then let's talk about your leadership style. Okay. And so, so I think uh, managing is one thing, organizing your teams and making sure that the right people are in the right place and that, you, that they have the authority to make their decisions and that they, they, they're well instructed on, 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 uh, on what to do. But leadership is a different thing. Sure. I mean, a leader is, is, is somebody that people want to follow. So how would you describe your, your leadership style and how do you think you're uh, perceived as a leader? What do you think people will say about your uh, Sure. About your leadership. Uh, first, I, I try. I, I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm an enthusiastic person. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I sometimes like a, a small children. So I like to. Uh, I get enthusiastic with uh, with projects and with opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, I try to inspire my teams also with this mm -hmm. with my this way of being myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, as a leadership model or a leadership approach. Uh, I, I believe it was not always like that in, in, mm -hmm. in all over these years, but currently uh, in this context that we are in, 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 the, in the company, I, I believe that the servant leadership is what suits better our needs now. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, I like to think that uh, I can uh, capture and attract the best. Okay? Mm -hmm. I like to give them room and space for them to, to work their magic, to, to, mm -hmm. to excel themselves. And I prefer to, to act like someone that removes blocks, that facilitates and let teams uh, 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 do their best and uh, go and provide the results. So okay. if you ask me, I, I currently in this context that we are in now, I would say that the servant leadership is what suits us better. And I try to, to, to apply this into my daily, to my daily work and the 
by in leading teams. And what is it that really drives you? What is it that in the morning when you wake up and you go to the job, you say, that's really what I want to achieve or that's what I want to do. What is it that drives you? When at the end of the week, are you happy uh, uh, if, if, if your work has been good? Yeah, well, uh, as, I, as I said, so I told you previously, I'm an I'm enthusiastic person. So, mm -hmm. and that kind of drives me by myself. So, uh, I really like what, what I do. I, I always mm -hmm. like, so, and I feel very, very fortunate for that. Okay, I consider myself a happy person and, uh, and a lucky person because I had the privilege to, to work and to do what I like. So okay. what drives me every day in the morning, okay, it's the knowing that, okay, I have, I have the, the space and I have the means to, uh, to excel myself, okay, to, mm -hmm. to improve myself, to grow myself, okay. That for me, it's very important. I, I, I cannot consider an environment where I just be stable, no. I just, I, I, I need to, 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 to think and find that there is always place for growth, for personal growth, yep. professional growth, okay? And that's basically, that, that's what drives me, okay? And keeps super. me happy, and keeps me happy. <laughs> Which is super important. Sure. So Miguel, you have shared uh, with us your MBTI uh, profile, your personality type. Uh, which is ISTJ, also known as the logistician. Logistic. And that an ISTJ is somebody who is in, more introverted, observant, uh, has thinking and judging personality traits. And these people, they typically tend uh, to be reserved, yet willful, uh, with a rational outlook on life. And they compose their actions carefully and carry them out with methodical purpose. So I'm going to give you a couple of typical strengths of people with your personality type, and then you tell me which one you recognize and maybe give an example. Uh, ISTJs uh, are typically very honest and direct. They're typically very strong-willed and dutiful, very responsible. They are calm and practical, and they like to create and enforce order uh, around them. Does that fit the bill for you? I think so. I think so. I think the assessment mm -hmm. is, is correct. I, I'm, I'm, I'm myself a person that like order. Okay, I like mm -hmm. order. I had to learn to live. Sometimes <laughs> order is not is not available as we would like, mm -hmm. and I had to learn to live with that. But I like order. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, mm -hmm. I am reserved, observative. So yes, uh, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, the flip side of strengths are weaknesses or development areas. And, and, and uh, I mean, you have a, a super interesting position today. So you have, of course, developed professionally, personally. So let, let's look at typical or potential uh, weaknesses of ISTJs. So they can be stubborn. They can be insensitive. They can sometimes do things too much by the book. They can be judgmental. Uh, often they're unreasonably and they blame themselves uh, sometimes. So where do you see maybe past uh, weaknesses and where have you developed yourself in these, uh, in these weaknesses? Yeah. Can you maybe give an example? Sure, you mentioned always by the book. They always go mm -hmm. by the book, okay? Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, I, years ago, I was uh, mm -hmm. a bit like that. So for me okay. going, uh, uh, thinking outside of the box, it was no, okay, the rules are there. So uh, I believe in rules, of course, rules mm -hmm. are mandatory for the, for the, for the society. But uh, I have learned over the years that uh, we need to sometimes be very quick on, on alternatives, not mm -hmm. be stuck into, into preconceived ideas. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was something that I learned. Okay. And okay. I learned with mistakes, of course. I learned with mistakes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't consider myself a stubborn people, a stubborn person. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I think no. Um, I, I tend not not insensitive. I, I tend over the years to 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 develop these these relational aspects. Okay. Of, of the job. Okay. To to yep. be able to deal with other other persons. Okay. 
But uh, I think, yeah, what you described that are the, the typical uh, weaknesses of of the logisticians. <laughs> I think so. Yes. But uh, and, and who did who did you learn from? Who were the important mentors in your life? People that you looked up from, looked look up to, that, and people that you really learned from. Good question. Good question. And mm -hmm. the answer is my role models and the people mm -hmm. that I still today look for them are my parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, it was with them that uh, I learned to be a balanced person, okay, mm -hmm. to be reasonable, okay, mm -hmm. um, that life, the success in life is the balance of good decisions. It's not mm -hmm. always good decisions, nor, but it's, it's a balance, it's a balance of good decisions. Yep. So it's them, it's them. Uh, I would call my, I would say my parents are my role models. They teach okay. me a lot of what, what I am today. So let's talk a little bit more about family. You uh, have uh, you have a son who Correct. is uh, 12 years old, if I'm uh, if I'm not mistaken. What are the values that you are passing on to them? What are your own core values that you want him to uh, to live by as well? Sure, uh, my son is is the son of my life. It's the most important thing to me. Okay, so mm -hmm. I, I teach I try to teach lots of things, of course, that I, I believe them. One of them is the ethics, okay? Ethics, mm -hmm. it's, it's very important. Uh, uh, he has to be truthful to him, to his friends, to his family, okay? Mm -hmm. um, he must uh, be concerned to not harm other people, okay? Mm -hmm. And to be smart to get away from bad situations, okay? Avoid them. Uh, you, you are not like this, so you should avoid them, okay? So mm -hmm. ethics, I would say that's one of the core values that I, t I, I try to, to, to teach him every day. And another is autonomy. I tell him a lot to be autonomous, okay? Mm -hmm. It's very important that you learn the skills that you will need to be success successful, okay? Um, many times in life, you will not be able to depend on others, nor expect no from others. So. You will have to be autonomous. You will have to search for your own uh, goals. Okay. Mm -hmm. You will have to learn the skills that you will need to be successful. And that's something that uh, I teach them a lot. I try to tell them a lot. He's 12 years old, of course. So I have to adapt this to, to, the, to the reality of a 12 year old children. Yeah. Okay. But I tell them at school. Okay. So. Uh, be autonomous, don't expect that someone will come in, into your rescue. You have to, to make your own path, okay? And that's very yeah. important because I try to do that uh, for me, okay? So, and mm -hmm. I, I would like that my son would uh, do that for him also. Hope, okay. I hope that he believes in that. So in your personal life, and, and, and let's exclude family, uh, because that's clearly very, very important and that's, uh, uh, for, for you. But outside of family, what would you consider is, is the best thing that has ever happened to you? But excluding family, because the first thing that happened... Uh, that, uh, it's, it's that of happened, course your son. It's my son. It's my son and my family, <laughs> my wife, of course. Yeah. Well, but uh, outside of, of, of family, okay, in terms of career, right, it's... Uh, mm -hmm. to the the, the I have to admit, I, my, my career has been consistently pushed up, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. I've been growing, okay? And yeah. uh, um, having that, uh, looking back and see the path, it's something that is very rewarding to me, okay? Um, it's something that, uh, um, uh, it, it's, uh, for me, it's, it's very important, okay? Uh, I see that mm -hmm. it is uh, the result of the effort that I put it, okay? being, for example, uh, promoted or invited by the board to, to take the leadership of the IT department, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, being invited to teach, for example, at the university, okay? So it's some, it, there are things that uh, um, I, I'm aware it is, it is the result of my, of my work, uh, mm -hmm. the results that I can get, okay? And the effort that I put on it. So for yeah. me, that's very rewarding, very rewarding. Now, also in your personal life, and we all have the good things that happen to us. You, you clearly, uh, I mean, you're very successful and, and you come across as a very happy person and, and a beautiful country but a, with a beautiful family. But 
also bad things happen to us and we learn from, from bad things. And, and, and so would you care to share with us what was maybe the worst thing that has ever happened to you in your life and, and how you overcome that and what you learned from it? Sure. Well, even, even in, that, uh, in that question, I consider myself a, a lucky person and a fortunate person. Mm -hmm. I, never had the, I never had a truly traumatic event in my life, okay? Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, okay, yet. Um, of course, uh, life, uh, uh, I'm a 44 year old, so... Uh, uh, still very young. <laughs> still very young, so, but okay, there are loved ones that uh, are no longer with me, of course, but that's mm -hmm. part of life, okay. But uh, I never had a truly traumatic experience in my life, so that's, for me, it's, it's something that, uh, it's very important, and I think, uh, I think about that a lot. I think about that a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, sometimes I, I believe, okay, when, when it's come my turn, <laughs> it's not ever, ever happened. So it's uh, very fortunate for me, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, no, no, there are bad days, of course. Some days I, mm -hmm. I, I, I get home and I say, okay, <laughs> let's move into the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, a few hours later, it, it passed, okay, let's focus again, okay? so. To be honest, Hendrik, I, I, I don't have a, a truly bad moment. Okay, I didn't have a truly bad moment. Okay, okay difficult moments, with very tired, very tired, very mm -hmm. cumbersome, but not exactly bad moments. Okay, let's go back to business. And um, I mean, you clearly, like you said, you have a, uh, your career is being pushed up, and you're going up and up and up, and and you're very successful. But we all make our mistakes, <laughs> and 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 our professional mistakes. We have to make them uh, to grow as a professional and, and, and uh, as long as we learn from them. So which one, if you look back on your career, which one would you consider your most brilliant failure? And, oh, yes. and what did you learn from it? Yes, my, a, a brilliant failure. Okay, uh, I have one. I have one that I carry with me still today. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it brought me lots of, of learning, okay? Uh, a few mm -hmm. years ago, uh, we had a chance to do a project th uh, that would allow us to renew lots of uh, infrastructure, lots of technology. Okay, it was a it was a, mm -hmm. a very complex project um, that would that will allow us to uh, to do lots of investments. Okay, uh, just by using the saving that the project was going to bring. Okay, so mm -hmm. it was a, a ideally perfect project scenario. Okay, um, I was too ambitious. I recognized that. I put, the, I raised the bar very high. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the goals to achieve with the project, in terms of, of execution, okay, uh, they were very high, and I mm -hmm. basically I know that it was not possible. It was, it, it were unreasonable goals. Okay, mm -hmm. the team was not able to to produce to deliver them all. Okay, although the project uh, at the end the balance was still positive. Okay, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, it we did not uh, we did not achieve the the, uh, the whole goals that we had proposed to ourselves. Okay, in yeah. terms of saving, in terms of uh, implementation of uh, several tools that we that we considered. Okay. Uh, and I look at that specific mm -hmm. project. It, it, was a, it was a project about uh, uh, reviewing the whole infrastructure of the company, okay, mm -hmm. from connectivity, yeah. from cybersecurity, from uh, of, uh, collaboration tools, okay, the, uh, a, a, huge, a huge scope, a huge scope. Yeah. And um, I, know, I know now, okay, that uh, th that scope was not... Uh, was not possible to, f to fulfill, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it caused lots of pressures in the teams, some frustration, some frustration on myself also and on, on the rest of the stakeholders. And I know, I know now that uh, it was a big part of me, okay? It was, okay. I, put, I, put, I raised the bar too high, okay? And I call that my, my brilliant failure, my brilliant failure. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, Miguel, do you have a personal mantra? And, and, and what is your personal mantra and how do you use that? Sure. I, ha I, I have a few, a few mantras mm -hmm. that uh, I use it to guide through my, 
month, through my day, through my life. Okay. Yeah. One is a sentence that I heard from a professor. Okay. That uh, that told me, uh, Miguel, you need to change while running. Change is something that occurs while running. Okay. What that does mean? What that means? It means that if if we want to improve and introduce change. Okay. Mm -hmm. The world will not stop and wait so that we are ready to do that. So the, the world will continue. Everything will continue to business will be as usual. Okay. Uh, so I have to understand and to know how to apply change while everything is still running. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's something that uh, uh, I use it as as a mantra, as something that yep. I try to apply every day. Okay, basically is okay. okay. The world will not uh, will not stop and wait for me. Okay, so it is me that will have to adapt yep. to the surroundings, not the other way around. So that's. And you said you said you have several mantras. You you, you care to share another one? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, another is uh, I prefer a, a small improvement improvement than a forever delayed perfection. Uh, this is a sentence that is written in many places, but I like it very much, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, I, re I, I identify myself with it very much. So, mm -hmm. um, because I, I, I can see uh, on a daily basis, lots of examples of people trying to achieve perfection uh, and mm -hmm. they are basically delaying, uh, delaying uh, the action. So. I use it for myself, for my family, and for my teams. Mm -hmm. This, 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 uh, this idea. So, uh, don't wait forever for the perfection. If you if you have the chance and the opportunity to implement a minor change, but a, a secure change, and that it will it will stick, it's better to do that one, two, three times, than forever wait for the perfection that will never come. So it is. Uh, uh, Waiting for that perfection is a, it's, it's a way of never getting things done. So it's, no. these are the, the things that I try to use it in, on my daily basis, okay? okay? At work, at home, everywhere. Miguel, we're coming to the, uh, to the last question of, uh, of this interview, and that is these videos are being watched by uh, future uh, digital leaders and directors of, uh, of, of information systems in, uh, in large logistics and other type of companies. So, what is the advice that you would give to these young, ambitious professionals that want to follow in your footsteps? Sure. Okay, okay. Well, uh, uh, first, okay, uh, I would say that if they believe on the values that I use for myself and for my son, mm -hmm. okay, so be ethic and be autonomous, okay? You have to learn your own skills. Okay, you have to work to get your own things and to achieve your goals. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's that's the first advice I would give to to a young to someone young that is aiming for a for a career. The other yeah. advice that I would give is that also that comes from learnings, uh, previous learnings is uh, you should curb your enthusiasm in terms of the amount of change that you can introduce on. Uh, on small portions of time, okay? Mm -hmm. um, that basically is related. It's better to, to do uh, minor improvements, okay? Because they will stick uh, more firmly. They will, they, will, they will stick and continue, okay? So trying to introduce uh, large amounts of change uh, at the same time most likely will not work, will not work. So. Please, I would say to those youngsters, uh, consider very well how we're going to, to, to introduce change uh, in, your, in your business, in your company, in your teams. Consider those very well. That would be the, the advice I would give to, to the youngsters. And on that note, Miguel, thank you so much for your time and for sharing all your experiences and, and, and your programs that you're working on. It was really, really a pleasure. I look forward to meeting you next time in Porto, in beautiful Porto. It was really a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hendrik. Hope to see you here soon in Porto. See you soon. Thank see you. See you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.